Welcome to worship this Palm Sunday. We begin in our bulletin under the gathering. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus! from Nazareth in Galilee, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us sing together hymn 344, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet hosannas ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and blessed. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising you on high, creation and all mortals in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went, our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children lift me for the Lord of To you before your passion they sang their hymn of praise. To you now by his glory, our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children makes me toss on us ring. Their praises you've accepted, accept the prayers we bring. Great author of all goodness, O good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to your Redeemer King, to whom the 
lips of children, make sweet Hosanna ring. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our service continues with the readings, beginning with a reading from Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. I invite you to sing with me in unison, Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken heart. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me, they plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. We continue with a reading from the letter to the Philippians. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you as you are able to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah, for he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, and have to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what do you want me to do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. 
In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. If he, he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabatani! That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord, who is Jesus the Christ. Amen. There will be no victory in strength. And so the world turns upside down. So many who are first will be last. So many who are the highest will become the lowest, and the lowest will be raised to the heights. Course. In retrospect, it makes sense of a kind. This has always been the divine project to bring us out of our graves. It's a reversal of fortune, a salvation. That's what we asked for. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Save us from extreme danger, from death, from disaster, Lord God. And the people gather around their Savior, a Savior who saves in a way that confuses and frustrates us because salvation could never really be what we always assumed and still be real salvation. It all begins with emptying. You all know the Christmas readings, right? You remember those. Luke with Mary and Joseph and shepherds and angels. We hear it on Christmas Eve every year. Matthew with Herod and the Magi and the massacre of the holy innocents of Bethlehem, which we often hear, especially around that time of year. John with his prologue about the word becoming flesh and living among us. You hear that, John 1, every Christmas day. But I imagine most of us don't think about Christmas when we hear this birth story out of the Philippians letter. We now think that this is the author, Paul, quoting a hymn that the congregation already knew, a, a hymn they already knew in that community. And it goes like this. I, we don't know the, the notes, so I'm not going to try to sing it at you. But it reads, though he emptied himself, taking the form of the slave, being born in human likeness, 
And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus. The nativity was his self-emptying. That is when he gave up all that is of God so that he could be filled instead with all that we are. And so now, born and empty, Jesus humbled himself. He lived. He argued. He walked. He ate. He drank and wept. He slept and prayed and listened. He spent time in company and time alone. He was praised by some and attacked by others. He looked for his people and he loved them. And he experienced what it was like to love someone who does not love you. This is the form of humility. The way God comes down among us. Think of that story of his entry into Jerusalem. Think about what Jesus' form is compared to the form of the powerful. Pilate entered the city led by soldiers. Jesus entered the city led by a crowd of poor peasants, throwing tree branches and cloaks and whatever they could find on the road. Pilate entered on a war horse. Jesus entered on a donkey. Pilate entered in armor. Jesus entered the city with no weapons, no banners, just whatever it was he was journeying around in, caked in the dust of the road. Jesus enters the city in a parody, a reversal of what power looks like. His birth was his emptying himself. His life was the fullness of human weakness and humility, and his death was a death on a cross. So what do we do with this? What should we do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? We cannot make him our genie, our emperor, our problem solver. He has emptied himself. He is in the form of a slave. He is full of humanity, and humanity is doomed to die. Crucify him, the crowds shout. Matthew says those were influenced by the authorities, their local officials. That may be so. After all, how often do we listen to those who sit on the judgment seats in positions of public trust and power, even when what they say is nonsense or contradicts what they said before or is openly self-serving? The nature of our powers as human beings is they prop themselves up. All our systems, all our schemes, they exist only for themselves. How can they possibly abide the appearance of this one, this one who comes down only for others, who empties himself only for rebels, who humbles himself only for the ungrateful, who dies only for the undeserving? He must be destroyed. And yet even destroying him, is only a part of him emptying himself and taking on human likeness. Jesus is filled with our sickness and our death so that we may be filled with his love and his life. What shall we do with this one, the one who is God's son? We come here now to an empty sanctuary through the internet. We come to songs some alone or just with the person next to us. This is not what we expected, not what we wanted, not what we had hoped. It feels empty, doesn't it? It feels anticlimactic, wrong, foolish, like something's missing, broken, turned upside down. Where are the cheers? Where's the procession? Where's the organ, the music? Where's the weeping and the tears and the friends? Where's all the excitement and the pomp and the circumstance? All we have today are a few foolish words, a whole lot of parody, 
and a big scandal. What can we do with it other than throw it away? But God does not throw away broken things. God does not abandon the humble and the empty. God does not leave us alone. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope, Eugene Peterson wrote, because there is less of you and more of God. Jesus came empty in his birth to fill himself with us so that we would be emptied, emptied of our pride and fear, our expectations and assumptions, our prejudices and our preferences. No more, no more solving, no more fixing, no more fighting, no more arguing, no more hurting, no more parading, no more hating, no more sobbing, no more dying, no more. Because all of that has been taken by Jesus. And now we are empty, empty so that we can be filled with God, the same God who fills us with God's love through the cross of this one, who is the Son of God. And the peace of God, which is surpassing all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in singing hymn 340, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth. It's found in the bulletin for the service, or hymn 340 in your hymnal. Da, 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 da. A lamb goes on complaining forth to save a world of sinners. He bears the burden all alone, not shown of all his honors. He goes to slaughter, weak and faint, is led to die without complaint. His spotless life he offers, he bears the shame, the stripes, the wrath, his anguish, mockery, and death. For us he gladly suffers. This Lamb is Christ, our greatest friend, the Lamb of God, our Savior, whom God in mercy chose to send to win us rebels over. Go down, my child, the Father said, and free my children from their dread of death and condemnation. The painful stripes are hard to bear, but by your death they all can share the joy of your salvation. Our Savior answered from his heart that he would take the burden. My Father's will is my command, I'll do as I am bidden. O wondrous love, O loving light, to write what mortals cannot write. The Son was sent from heaven, what love, O love, who came to save. I loving even to the grave, until the stone was riven. Of death I am no more afraid, your dying is my living. You clothe me in your royal robes, that you are always giving. Your love is dress enough for me to wear through all eternity. 
before the throne of heaven, where we shall stand close by your side, your church, the well-appointed bride. When all the faithful gather, Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and fullness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation for the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and those who face execution. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying, Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially Caitlin, Lynn, Bill, Michael, Sue, Roberta, Dorothy, Ruth, Bob, Nancy, Bonnie, Emma, Ted, Bruce, Teresa, and Janet. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, we pray for all who will prepare and lead worship in this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord God, we especially lift to you today and this week, food pantry volunteers everywhere, especially those volunteering this week at Atonement as we open to feed the community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, especially John Donne, Benedict the African, Rosemary, Shirley, Gail, and Vernon, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Dear friends, if you're following along, you will notice that there is a space here for an offering moment. Just a brief word about the offering. We, of course, offer our entire lives to God as they were first given to us 
but it's important for us to remember that things such as atonement and other ministries do continue. If you're not sure how to continue contributing your tithes and offerings to the congregation, you can email me or Todd Butman, and he'd be glad to help you out. If you're watching this on YouTube and don't know how to do that, go to our website, atonementlutheranchurch.com, and you'll be able to contact me for more instructions. We can receive uh, giving through tithes and offerings, either through checks in the mail or through online payments as well. And we can help you if you have any difficulty with that. Let us take a moment of silence to offer our whole lives and all that we are and are filled with to God. Thank you for your faithfulness, dear friends. Let us give thanksgiving and pray for God's mercy in this time of strangeness and abstinence from communion. We begin with our canticle of thanksgiving. It's a short tune. It's hymn 509. It's found in your bulletin or hymn 509. I think you know this tune. Ta 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 ta. God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor. Life it guides our way, in death it is our stay. Lord, grant while time shall last, your church may hold it fast throughout all generations. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Most merciful Lord, we grieve that we cannot assemble to hear your word and receive your supper. We experience the weight of separation. And we long for conversation and consolation gathered as one body in you. Yet, O oh Lord Jesus, remind us of the bold and beautifully audacious woman who also could not touch your body, but dared in faith to grab hold of the hem of your garment so that she would be healed. Grant us such boldness of faith when we too may not take hold of your body and blood, that we might, like her, cling to the hem of your garment and receive the grace of your healing. Deliver us from pestilence, sorrow, and hardship. Protect those who must put themselves at risk during this time. In this wilderness, teach us to be your people and bring us again to your table so that we may not only touch your hem, but commune with you. Shape us through this experience to better embody being your people for the sake of the world. Renew and reshape us, O God, for you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please join with me in singing hymn 347, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Go to Dark Gethsemane, 
All who feel the tempter's power, your Redeemer's conflict see. Watch with him one bitter hour, turn not from his griefs away. Learn from Jesus Christ to pray. Follow through the judgment hall, you the Lord of life are reign. Oh, the word would and the law, oh, the pangs his soul sustain. Shun not suffering, shame, or loss. Learn from him to bear the cross. Calvary's mournful mountain climb, there adoring at his feet. Hark that miracle of time, God's own sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear him cry. Learn from Jesus Christ to die. Early hasten to the tomb, where they laid his breathless clay. All this solitude and gloom, who has taken him away? Christ is risen, he meets our eyes. Savior, teach us so to rise. Dear friends, beloved of God, wherever you may be, whether you are going or staying, serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us this Palm Sunday. Holy Week will, I think, be live streamed on this YouTube channel, so please join me. That will be beginning at 8 p.m. each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then I'll see you on Zoom call Sunday, 10 a.m. to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Thank you so very much for joining with us. Thank you for the Congregation of Atonement for being here. I really appreciate your presence and your faces, smiling and praying with me. Thank you to our electors, and thank you to all of you for your prayers and support in this time of ministry. Dear friends, God be with you always. Amen. <laughs>